Sound Spades, and this week I wanted to share with you Twitch streamers and podcasters another product that you really should consider working with to help your audio as it goes out over the air live. This is the DBX286S signal processor. It works live with sound going straight out over the air or whatever the case may be. Full disclosure, DBX sent me this to review, but it's not going to affect my opinion of it. So don't even think that they're trying to buy me off. So for this review, we're going to deviate a little bit from our norm. We're going to route directly through this DBX286S, and we're going to record live right in front of you on a Tascam DR40 digital audio mixer. That's about a $400 setup. Not bad. But then, of course, you got to add in the mic and cables and whatnot. But we're going to start with showing you this unit before we even get into things. Starting with the back, right there, the back. Uh, power plugs in there. It's only 15 watts power consumption. And here's what's one of the cool things. This has a mic and a line level input. This is a standard, you know, XLR input. But this here is a TRS, means it's a tip ring sleeve input. That means it's more of a balanced input. And you can actually plug a mono in there as well. But it does accept a balanced input. A TRS means tip ring sleeve. So if you didn't know that, that's what that means. Uh, output, it has right there. And then insert is basically if you're trying to use some sort of an instrument or using it through as a through for some sort of effects processing or something like that. I'm not going to use that. And if you're doing stri uh, Twitch streaming or podcasting, who knows? You may use it. You are now hearing me through the system that we have before us here. We are going directly out of this Shure SM7B microphone into this DBX286S and then recording onto this Tascam DR40 digital audio recorder. Now, the reason why we're using that recorder and not the standard recorder, the Sound Devices Mix Pre 6 that I use on this channel, is because I wanted you to have an idea of what it would sound like if you were doing podcasting on a budget. Now, you could have this recorder as a bare bones basic recorder. You could have a Focusrite 2i4 digital audio uh, USB interface. You could have a Zoom UAC2 digital audio USB interface, something along those lines. But this here is a very bare bones basic setup. Now, the reason I chose this SM7B microphone as opposed to an SM58 or an SM58 uh, uh, beta 58a or something like that is because it requires as far as gain is concerned a lot of gain now uh, this actually is a microphone that you could imagine having about 59 decibels of gain requirement in order to actually make this thing work now it does not need phantom power right there 48 volt phantom power you hear it doesn't actually change my voice at all even though we are recording through this unit now if i adjust this knob even just a little bitty bit taking the gain down to maybe 45 decibels i'm having to speak closer to the mic to make myself heard more but let's not do that let's go on back up to the normal level up there's there's 60 i'm going to back off just a little bit and you can see the level indicator right there just blasting away and showing that we're hitting this yellow mark there at zero db ever so slightly every once in a while you should not hear me hear that hit that clip mark unless you want me to get really close here and even then geez i don't want to do that it's hurting my ears even then i'm not clipping this thing so it's pretty solid as far as uh, input goes on this uh, preamp here. Now, if I were to engage that 48 volt fan power, that would be if I was going to go into something like a cloud lifter, which wouldn't you know, I happen to have right here a cloud lifter CLZ. I might as well go in line with that so that way we can get rid of some of this background noise, uh, this background hiss. Now, Let's hear it first before I actually switch over to it. That way you know what it sounds like before I do. There is the background noise. Now, if I were to connect up directly through to this, I'll be fast. Sorry, you're going to have to hear this. Woo! Okay, I got to... Turn down that gain a little bit. And suddenly, there is the SM7B microphone going through the Cloudlifter CLZ. Now, I am running it, uh, just so you know, if you're, if you're curious here, how am I doing the settings? I'm using max mode as opposed to more mode because max gives more gain, and I really like that, uh, with, with lower background noise, of course. And, of course, I'm going to use it flat. I'm not going to use it in the uh, custom mess with your sound volume, uh, you know, 
you've, you've seen my review. If not, check out this link right there. You can see this video of me reviewing this product and the, the CL1 Cloud Lifter at the same time. Let's go back to Acoustically Flat. This is not about the Cloud Lifter, of course. So here we are going directly in. I might as well try to clip this microphone yet again. We're going to suddenly make it very, very sensitive here as I gain this thing way up. Now, I don't need to do a whole lot. I can talk, and if I want to clip this thing, I can talk really close. There it is. Ha ha ha. You see the mic right like Okay, let's not do this much more. Okay, I don't want to, I want to just destroy it here uh, because uh, I don't know what kind of system you have, but you don't want to listen to that, do you? Okay, so let's get past all of this stuff right here. I should be using this in process bypass mode since I'm just going flat right now. Now, the two things you really need to at the bare bones basic monitor is right here, which is your input game or line level input gain, whichever you happen to have connected up. And then over here on the other end, you have your output gain and it has a clip light on it as well. So I can adjust my level here and as I start to do my processing here in line I can adjust my output gain and I can turn it up if I want to or I can turn it down if I want to however because I have bypassed my process it's not going to change it the only thing it's going to be affecting right now uh, the signal is going to be the preamp, the mic preamp right there. Now if I engage even though everything else is down if you notice here on this DBX everything is down all the processes, if I were to engage this, suddenly this is going to start working for us. If I lower it, you're going to hear me attenuate. If I start going up with it, it's going to start begin, begin getting to more sensitivity right there. Now, if I were to, to need a lot of gain for whatever reason, I could gain both of these way up and then I can't like do anything more than breathe. Otherwise, it's going to be blowing the meter. But let's do it just to have fun. It's so loud. Man, just turning it up, it was able to hear through my headphones. Let's not do this anymore. Okay, man, that was pretty crazy. All right, so just if you're curious here, normally it requires about 59 decibels of gain, and currently my gain on it is right there at 30 decibels. So it's, it's given me about 29 decibels of gain, or let's go up just to the normal, let's, let's make it... Uh, what what Cloudlifter says it is, which is about 25 decibels a game. So before we go any farther, I wanted you to note that I am using the 80 hertz high pass filter on this DBX286S. The reason why is because there's no real point in hearing all the rumbles and stuff that are inherent below 80 hertz. In this case, it is a third order roll off. That means that it's 18 decibels of reduction per octave. At 80 hertz, it's not attenuating anything, but at 40 hertz, it's attenuating 18 decibels. And at 20 hertz, it's doing 36 decibels. So keep that in mind. Oh, and real quick, I didn't mention this before. The output gain ranges between negative 30 and plus 10 decibels. So keep that in mind. Let's go into our first feature, compression. Here's how a compressor normally works. You have a threshold knob that basically gains up the sound. Then you have an attack which basically is the speed in milliseconds that the compressor is going to engage itself. Then you have a release that once it's done compressing and there is a compression ratio in there also, then the release releases it and goes back to its normal volume level once it's done compressing. Now, here's how that whole thing works. Let's say that I set my threshold to go up 10 dB. What the compressor does is anything, anytime it goes above up to that 10 dB mark, anything above the, the typical gain setting, it's going to squash it down to the normal gain setting and it's going to do it at the attack speed. Then when it's done, if a volume level goes below that point, it's going to slowly release it. So that way it goes back to normal. Now, if my volume is constantly low, and by setting that 10 dB higher, then it's going to constantly give me more compression. But that also raises the noise floor, so the whole background noise level goes up at the same time. The DBX286S's compressor is laid out differently than any other compressor I've ever seen before. It has a drive knob and a density knob that goes from 0 to 10. It doesn't say it in decibels. If it were in decibels, the drive or threshold would go between a range of about negative 40 and plus 20 decibels. The attack is between about 10 milliseconds and one second, depending on uh, the volume. If it's trying to do a very minor 
uh, very slow attack, then it would go closer to the uh, one second decibel. But if for a very fast attack, it will go down to as quick as 10 milliseconds. Now, the, the ratio is fixed at four to one, and the density is basically the release, and that will go between about one decibel per second and 75 decibels per second. Maximum compression on this unit is negative 30 dB. So it will reduce up to 30 decibels. Let's test this thing. If I start to gain myself up, I'm going to have to take my volume down just a little bit. Now, I don't know what exactly this level is, but right now it's around three. Now, notice as it gains up, it's bringing up my noise floor as well. Now, if I use compression, that's something you have to be aware of. It raises the noise floor because as you let's say gain everything up 10 decibels and you then start squashing down that dynamic range down to to the zero mark again then anything within that 10 decibel range is going to basically become that one decibel mark it basically takes anything from from zero db up to plus 10 db and lowers it down but your noise floor at the same time has gone up that 10 decibels as well so let's start engaging this compression right here and as it starts to go up if I start to be too loud, let me actually lower my gain, my, my output uh, level here, uh, right here. I'm going to take it down to negative 10 dB. Now, if I start to push this too hard, the gain reduction is going to start kicking in, as you can see. Now, if I want it to be a faster release, then I'm going to gain it all the way up towards 10. So this is going to be 10, I'm sorry, 75 decibels per second. So if I'm really, really loud into this thing, it's going to be gain reducing like crazy. And I'm going to turn this thing up any, any higher. So now anything below, like, what is this thing? Like almost like 20 decibels or whatever. This thing is now, if I go quiet, you hear that noise floor come way up but my voice is also attenuated way down. So if you notice, my dynamic range is basically staying the same, whether I am loud or I'm quiet. If I'm quiet, like right now, you're still hearing my output level at the same volume that you would be if I get really, really loud. Because what happens if I get really, really loud is you hear the dynamic range go down and this is attacking it or releasing it rather really quickly. So I'm going to turn it all the way down to a minimum where it's one decibel per second. And if I go quiet, you hear the level slowly coming back up again. That's because what it's doing is it's releasing it very slowly. So that compressor, it's like, okay, what are you going to do? Are you going to go loud again? And so it slowly starts to turn that level back up to that maximum setting. I don't need to use this so hot. It's going to be completely crazy if I do. But at the same time, I need to raise my gain back up at the other end. So as you note, as the drive level comes up, that's, a, that's your threshold, basically. If I gain it up 10 dB, chances are I need to lower my gain, uh, my output gain by about 10 dB as well to, to even it out. Now, it could, according to how you're doing your compression, it could fluctuate. You might have to gain it maybe 7 dB or maybe 12 dB. It depends on your settings. Play with them. Figure it out. You'll figure it out and uh, find the settings that are best for you. The next Next thing that we're going to go into is the de -esser. Typically, the S sound of your voice is going to be between about 4 and 9 kilohertz. Now, in this particular unit, it ranges between about 800 hertz all the way up to 10,000 hertz. And it is adjustable on this frequency knob right here. Now, the threshold controls up to 15 decibels of gain reduction. So if I start to dial in on my S sound, wherever it happens to be, you're going to see this little knob here jump in, or the, the light, I should say. And it, it has one and it has six. Right there, that one is going to be right when it hears my voice. Now, I don't have the threshold up any. If I bring up the threshold, it's saying, okay, well, I can, I can tell that some some sounds right there. You see it's reducing the S sound right there. I, I, I typically have an S sound between about 6 and 10,000, uh, I'm sorry, 8 and 6,000 hertz. So as I'm adjusting uh, this level here, you can hear how it almost pulls back too much. So if I'm doing sound speeds, sound speeds, it, it almost seems to go too much if I have it at that setting. Now here it is overly sibil sibilant again, and you hear the sound sound. So that's a little less harsh right there. But you have to kind of get used to it because 
too much SD, uh, DSing is going to almost sound, sounds like it's choking out the frequencies and it doesn't really sound very good at that point. So you want to you wanna really dial in and play with it because your frequency range that you set it to, it could just be the lower part of the S frequencies because it is not one frequency that all of your S's sound like. Now, it almost makes me sound like I have a lisp like Dustin on Stranger Things or something. Um, now, now I, if I dial it up a little bit higher, then I can get a little bit of the lower end S's and it, that, that may sound a little bit better and uh, just take out the higher pitch S's that are going to be more sibilant and kind of, you know, more scratching to your to your brain um, if, and your, your ears are just going to sound like it's raking on it. So you can dial in on the settings exactly as you want. But as a general rule, that's what you need to consider. It has a one decibel and it has a six decibel. If that hits a peak of the red right there, it's showing you that it's, it's detecting a lot of S sounds right there. So if I go A, B, C, C, see how that red, that red engaged there? D, E, D, 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 D. Hmm, that's interesting. E, F, G, F. Well, there's a little bit of an S in there. Okay, and of course, I'm using it kind of high right there regarding the threshold. But if I totally decide to kill it, then anything I say is going to be reduced like crazy. I mean, you can hear it just kicking in the gear there. And it's a very quick re uh, attack, about, twin, tw uh, about 10 milliseconds. And of course, the release is going to be, you know... <laughs> pretty quick as well probably because it has to get back to normal. The deesser release time is about 12 decibels per millisecond. The enhancer has two knobs. It has a low frequency boost and a high frequency boost. Now let's talk about the low frequency first. If you start to adjust this, it, uh, or actually the enhancer is right here, the low frequency boost is going to start doing a bell-shaped curve uh, where it boosts about 80 hertz and starts cutting around 250 hertz simultaneously. That's going to reduce some of the muddiness in your voice. Now, if I start to increase this knob here, you can hear that the bass part of my voice here starts to change. I'm getting a little bit bassier, even though, uh, and, and you know, it's getting outrageously in saying right now, but it is reducing that 250 hertz uh, area where muddiness normally starts uh, coming in to really play there. But at the same time, you are hearing a lot of low end on me. Now, I don't need to go completely crazy with it. As a matter of fact, I don't even use the enhancer at all, unless, of course, I really feel like I need to, uh, uh, to even out my voice if I'm too far away from the mic. Now, the high frequency boost is something I'm never going to touch because, as we know, the way that it typically works without, with regards to your voice is your nasal frequencies and tonal clarity ranges between about 800 hertz and 1K. Digital harshness is between about 2.5 and about 4 K hertz, and then you have a presence of a, uh, you know, presence frequencies is around between about three and six uh, K, and then you have sibilance is really strong between about 4.9 K, and then of course your brightness is, bet is between about nine and 11 K. Now that's totally overkill. You don't need to know all that stuff, but it's there in, right there if you need to actually recall it. Um, now, in this particular case, it basically lumps together high frequencies and it boosts up to 50 dec uh, 15 decibels, I should say. So if I start to go in here, you're going to notice that it's going to become even more sibilant, more digital harsh, or, or maybe not harshness, it's the wrong word for it, but there is a presence increase. There is a brightness addition. And if I did not have a whole lot of highs in my voice, you would definitely be hearing more of that now. Now, as you can hear on this high and presence boost uh, and brightness and, and enhancement, I should say, then it is overkill for me. I don't need to do that. If I did anything, I would need to actually adjust the low end boost and give myself a little bit more manual, manly bass. But, uh, you know, if I do that, then I may need to compensate a little bit because it just is going to start knocking out those higher frequencies on my voice. So this is going to even me out a little bit. Now, of course, don't go ridiculous and really add a lot of low end because, you know, your hissingness, the background hiss noise is really inherent on that high pass, uh, the, the high frequency enhancement knob. Not so much in the low. All the way up all the way down. That's because the frequency range that his falls into, if you listen to it, it's on the high side. 
Now let's talk about the expander gate function of the DBX286S. Unlike the compressor, the threshold knob, and it actually is called threshold on the expander gate, is set up in decibels, uh, as opposed to the drive, which is whatever it's want to call, it wants to call that. But the threshold there is your decibels. So whatever you set that to, anything below that decibel rating is going to be reduced. So if I were to set that to around negative 30 decibels, anything below negative 30 decibels is going to be reduced. Um, now let's let's look also over here at the ratio. The ratio is the amount of attenuation. If it's closer to uh, the 1.5 right here mark, then it's it's going to just kind of expand out everything. It's going to anything below that noise level of negative 30 decibels, it's going to be expanded out. So it's going to it's going to basically lower it just gradually, and it's and, and basically it's going to lower the background noise. If you were to crank this thing all the way up to its max, which is 10 to 1 ratio, then it is going to act more of a gate. And you can hear that the background noise completely goes away. See that? 30 decibels. This room is actually really quiet. So negative 30 decibels is way overkill for this. But a gate does not allow any sound to go through unless it is over that negative 30 decibels. So if I lower this, Watch that knob right there. Uh, watch the light. It is currently going to be, it's red when the gate is shut. It's green when it allows sound to pass. So I'm going to lower this all the way down, and you can see the, how there is no more gate involved in it, even though the, the ratio is all the way up. Right now, it is not going red at all. As I start to slowly increase the threshold, I'm basically saying, this background noise is no longer acceptable. This background noise level is no longer acceptable. Anything below is going to completely negate out. It's going to lower it. So as soon as I go below that threshold, it is in my volume level, it is going to completely negate that out. So listen. Okay, so right there is where you would hear the background noise in my room start to completely, you know, you would start to hear it go completely away. Now, here is my settings on how I use this. Now, first of all, in a quiet environment like this, you don't necessarily need to go completely crazy with your ratio. Uh, you know, typically three to one to five to one is the most aggressive you really ever want to go with it. I'm going to go three to one here because this booth environment is pretty quiet. Now, if I set my threshold, uh, you know, and start to go up on that, it's going to slowly start, you know, raising the acceptable background noise level. And as that starts to get up to uh, the background noise level here in the room, starts to actually hit that level, you're going to see this light go red. And when it starts to go red, listen to my background noise. It's going to suddenly go from here to here it's good because it's just it kind of stops it in it's not a smooth knob it kind of goes look like in increments and it's going to go down a little bit it's going to go down a little bit then it's going to completely disappear once it completely disappears you want to go maybe two more clicks as a matter of fact what i'll do is i'll improve i'll, I'll increase the gain so you can really hear it easily so right there is right before it starts to go red. So listen and watch. Right there. That right there is the maximum amount that it can go. Now, once that is engaged, I mean, I can go all the way up if I want to, but I don't need to. Because if I go up any higher, that's my background noise setting right there. But if, if I want to, what I'll do is I'll go like two more clicks. I'll go one, two. So two more clicks up, and now I can bring my level back down to zero dB because I don't need to be quite as, uh, as quiet anymore. But right there is the volume level that it will completely reduce my background noise level at. So whatever that setting is, it's just below the negative 30 mark in this particular room. Anything below that mark is, if as soon as I go quiet, for example, it's going to completely gate it out. It's going to expand it, rather. If I were to take this aggressively all the way up to 10, point, 10 to 1, it's going to be gating it out. So the, And the difference is expanding just kind of lowers it, and gating is like nothing. It's going to be like open a door, allow the sound through. Nope, the door is now closed. You're not going to, or I should say, say probably a gate. Use a gate if you allow it through. Go open the gate, close the gate. Uh, there's your analogy right there. I'm going to go quiet. My background noise disappears right there. I have to speak up and over this thing because it has a pretty fast attack of, I think, one millisecond in order for my voice to get through that gate. Now, 
if you were using any kind of a digital like gate on your computer, like in your DAW, digital audio workstation, then you could set a pre-release, like uh, 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 I forgot what they call it exactly, like your, uh, it releases the gate like in milliseconds before you actually say your voice. So it's like a pre-release. Uh, so that way it will allow you to not clip off the first millisecond or so of your sound. But in this case, it does a pretty good job of just allowing uh, of completely eliminating the background noise and then allowing my voice through as soon as I start to talk. So I can go quiet, no background noise. As soon as I start talking again, you hear my voice through this uh, unit. So I call that pretty effective. It's a, it sounds like a very good expander. Here's one thing I really appreciate about the DBX286S. Any of these processes that you engage, it knows the right order to do them in. Like for example, here's my expander gate. It is currently knocking out any of my background noise, which I don't really have any. I'm not like, you don't hear an air conditioner, you don't hear a refrigerator, you don't hear a, a laundry, you know, the, the, the washer and dryer running. You don't hear any of that stuff because none of them are on and you're not gonna hear them anyway in this environment. But if I engage my compressor, then what you would normally have is you would, if it was going the wrong way, then you would hear it gain up all the background noise. Like if it started here on the left and went to the right, it would gain up my background noise and suddenly it would pass outside of the threshold and you would, and you would no longer then be able to gate it out at that same threshold level. You'd have, to you'd have to raise your threshold level in order to meet that compression uh, the, the compression noise floor that it would be bringing up. So if the noise floor is here by nature and it starts to increase the noise floor as it's bringing up the threshold, then that noise floor would have to be adjusted here. You'd have to compensate with this, but it doesn't need to. You don't need to. It automatically knows that the noise floor is the same regardless of which, which you know feature you are adjusting. So if I were to keep this expander set to about right here, and I start engaging the compressor. Now I'm gonna to have to lower my gain output here. And at the same time, I'm increasing my threshold on the compressor. So as I do this, my volume level is reducing on the compressor. Now, if I go quiet, it's slow to release, but check that out. The background volume level is still, it is higher. You hear a little bit more background noise as I'm talking, but as soon as I go quiet, it drops completely out because it's a pretty fat, I'm sorry, it's a pretty slow right now release. If I go all the way the other direction, then the second I'm done talking, it's gonna pretty much drop that back to where it is. You hear that? It's gonna instantly stop reducing the background noise. It's basically dropping it right back down, right there. So it's almost like crazy. You can hear the amount of decibel reduction that it's doing. And so if I'm really, really quiet, I'm trying to be very quiet and then suddenly I'm, oh, that was crazy. Oh man, I can't believe it. So if you're a Twitch streamer or something like that and you're playing a game and you suddenly scream really loud, you don't have to blow your meters and you know completely distort your audio or completely have everybody out there jump because you went completely nuts and, and, and you know had your, your volume go out of control there. You can set your attack very quickly and it's going to very quickly release. Now that can sound like a hiccup sometimes if you set a compressor compressor wrong, but I don't need to necessarily uh, tell you how to use this thing. You will play with it and find the settings that you like the most on it. I don't need to really play with my dynamics a lot for what I do here on this channel. Sorry for that. But what I will show you is that it at least does it the right order. So there you have it. Everything is now back down as low as it could possibly go. So everything is basically not working. I can hit the process bypass button and it does not change my voice at all. Here's what I think about this particular unit. This here is solid. If you are a podcaster and you do live podcasting out from your house where you might have, you know, an air conditioning unit or something on there and you want to eliminate your background noise, even if it's way down in the mix, you could have a background hiss if you really want to, or you could use it and expand out, or you could use your, your compression. And if you are a Twitch streamer and you're doing something like a zombie series and you jump a bunch of jump scares, you're doing Five Nights at Freddy's, something like that, and you constantly yell and scream, and then you might go quiet when you get scared, something like that, then it could be one of those things where you engage the compressor and you engage the expander and you might want to make your voice sound different. 
whatever you want to do. It is all right here at your fingertips and you have the ability to use it with the DBX 286S. Now, if you look online, you can find these sometimes for about $100, but they sell new for around $200. Some places that you can sometimes find them really cheap is Guitar Center's website in the used section or on eBay. eBay usually has a little bit higher prices. Um, you know, it, depending on because you might have more people actually trying to compete for them. But I have seen them on Guitar Center's used website, and they normally don't stay there very long. If people don't know the price to list them as, then they can be put up there for around $100. As a matter of fact, I bought mine for $100 when I bought it off of the used section of Guitar Center's website. And I only had to watch it for about two weeks once I actually spotted it. Now, here's another thing that's really cool is the 286S is the same exact exact unit basically as the 286A. The only difference is a black face plate and they change the internal components a little bit, but they basically work the same way. So even though it's older, the 286A is something you can buy because it does about the same thing as the 286S. The, the settings uh, are the exact same layout and the specs are slightly different, if at all different at all. Now, here's one of the cool things that I have done and I strongly recommend you to do if you are going to use it as part of your home Twitch streaming system or something like that. You can get it put into a 1U rack space that you can uh, that you can basically buy a little 1U rack space case for. As a matter of fact, at the time of this video, there is a guy on eBay selling 1U rack spaces. If you just do a search for 1U rack space case, then it comes up as Pearson Cases. I bought mine from him. It's like $35 for a case that you can put this thing in. Here's a picture of my setup when I do my editing. Um, if I use it at all, you can see that it's inside of a case and I can put my computer monitor on it or I can put anything I want to on top of it and I don't have to worry about these, the rack, you know, uh, you know, it's a rack mount unit. I don't have to worry about any of that if it's in this case. The case contains it all and it's very well made. I really like that and appreciate that about it. Now, if you do Twitch streaming, I strongly recommend you to get something like this because if you can process, especially, I should say, I should say, if you process currently, you process on your computer and you do a lot of gaming with high frame rates and that kind of thing and you're, you're, you're shooting out a lot of uh, data to the internet, uh, you know, typically you're going to be at 720p at maybe 60 frames per second. But if you are going out on your computer at all at 1080p, then you really need something like this to handle all of your audio processing because if it's doing it on board, you're going to be choking out your system resources because it's trying to do all of this on the fly. This unit right here handles it all for you. You. So all you do is you go out line level into your Focusrite or your Zoom, whatever your audio, your USB audio interface is, you just go straight into it, set your level accordingly. And remember, it is line level out, so it's not mic level. You have to set that as line level. And then you're, you're basically done. It handles all that stuff for you. You can save your settings and use them identically. And by having an actual knob that you can grab, you don't have to go into a menu to change something. So even on the fly, if you suddenly you're going to be playing a game, you're like, oh man, I might need to actually process my sound differently. You can adjust something on the fly because it's an actual knob. I love knobs. I wish things were less menu driven and more actual knobs and switches. Completely love that about this DBX 286S. So thank you DBX for sending this to me and I strongly recommend you to get one because I love these things. These are absolutely amazing units, especially for the $200 price point. And remember, you can get them used for about half the price. There you have it, the DBX 286S signal processing and preamp unit. If you want more information about that, there's links down in the description. But in the meantime, tune in to Sound Speeds in the future for more product reviews and sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.